Then um, someone is in trouble. It was like because of this election. Okay. We have intrapersonal conflict. Um, we are using the parameter of the level of space within which the conflict is happening. That is conflict within a person. We, I, I spoke briefly about it in the morning. Also, we have interpersonal conflict. That is conflict between two or more people over personal interests, values, and needs. Beyond these, <laughs> We have uh, intra group conflict, intra group conflict, which is conflicts that occur within a group over group values and needs, and for which group members mobilize in factions. That is internal, for example, internal party crisis. You see, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a difference. In, Can you mute your mics, please? There is a difference between interpersonal conflicts and intragroup conflicts. That is, difference between interpersonal conflicts between members of a group. The difference is that interpersonal conflict is about the need of individuals is about their goals is about their interests but intra group conflict is when individuals in the group mobilize on group interests group values group needs so beyond this we have um inter group conflict that is conflict between two or more groups these groups can be in a church, they can be in a community, they can be in a neighborhood. They can be in a neighborhood. Uh, as long as groups mobilize against another group, that is what we refer to as intergroup conflicts. We have interstates or international conflicts, conflicts between countries, like the Ukrainian Russia conflict is an interstate conflict. Also, we have intrastates within a state. For example, civil war, civil wars. Um, uh, that's just categorizing conflicts using the parameter of the space or the level within which the conflict is happening. If we use the parameter of the major driver of conflict, we have these types of conflict, ethnic, religious, political, ethno-religious, and so on and so forth, communal conflicts resource-based conflict, indigenous settler, and so on. Um, so we are going to be, we are just going to limit ourselves to these two categories or to these two yardsticks of categorizing conflicts. Uh, <clears throat> this is the end of the presentation of the session on understanding conflict. You recall, we look at the definition of conflict. We look at the nature of conflict, the essential nature of conflict. And thereabout, we saw that conflict, for you to say you understand a particular conflict, you have to look at its dimensions, the dimension of perception of incompatibility, how parties act towards incompatibility, how they communicate about this incompatibility. I would say that these have implication for conflict management because a conflict manager must now weave his intervention around this. And we said that a major aspect of managing conflict is for the conflict manager to change the perception of the parties about conflict generally, to change their perception of conflict generally. 
that's why we went through, I mean, we did that class activity, which, uh, which is uh, titled Language uh, or Metaphors, Conflict Metaphors, Understanding Conflict Through Metaphors. Only three groups presented, group three, four, and six. We are waiting for the explanation of other groups when we have the time. So, and then from there, we move to stages, stages of conflict, stages of conflict. And we said that escalation is a very critical point in stages of conflict. But irrespective of the stage, the conflict manager is called upon to intervene. Um, managing conflict calls for creativity on the aspects of the manager to be able to bring about uh, maybe the best solutions for the conflict. And we dwell so much, so much on escalation stage, escalation stage. We saw destructive and constructive escalation. And so I, I am optimistic that having gone through this, uh, each of us now have a better understanding of what conflict is because our understanding of conflict is a major competence that we need as conflict managers. So I want to say very big thanks to you. Very big thanks to you for listening. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you very much. Dr. Ajek, over to you. Now. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you for that very detailed and robust package. It's been an interest, interesting time. Um, next on our program is um, group activity presentations, and it will be handled or anchored by Dr. Um, Dr. George, Dr. Kyode George, who has been a practitioner of peace studies for about 20 years now. He's immediate past HOD for Caleb University Peace Studies in um, as long as so in this period that he will take the next module after the presentation promises to be interesting as well. Please welcome Dr. Kyle George. Dr. Kyle George, over to you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Kyle good, afternoon. good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, good afternoon sir. sir. Yeah, good welcome. afternoon, sir. It's a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, events and uh, we hope that at the end of it all we'll all be we we'll all be better conflict managers and uh, we have our communities living in a uh, uh, better peace in jesus name amen, amen. 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 yeah uh, am i going straight on to the next model which is a conflict handling style um, not yet Okay. okay. Yes, you have to handle the presentation for the 10 groups, sir. The pre course assignment that we're given. We'll present, you know, the okay. first set, maybe the first five will present, then go to handling styles of um, um, conflict resolution, and then we'll continue with the remaining groups. Okay. According uh, to the program. Well, I have been having challenges joining the meeting since, so I just got. Uh, the link about a few moments ago. So I would just like to invite those that are ready to present. Do we have any group that's ready to present now? Hello, do, do we have any group here to present the, the discussion? Group three, sir. No group. Group three. Group three. Group three. Okay. Group three. Can you have the you have the floor now? Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Once again. So um, our class, our group. Has... Excuse me, ma'am. Pastor, the short come. Please, can you help us? Yes, sir. Please help us mute your phone. I'm on mute. Oh, sorry. Thank you, sir. Group three, please go ahead. 
Tell okay. me, I mean, so our group me. activity, the okay. first question we we'll discuss was what, write five words that come to mind when you hear the word cross lips. And um, the first word we discuss is misunderstanding. The second is disagreement. The third is discord. This is incompatibility, sorry. Fight. Then um, there are five words that come to mind when you hear conflicts. So the second question I treated is then five five major characters in the Bible and determine their conflict handling style according to the, the manual that we have. So the first answer we looked at is Abraham and Lot. And their conflict handling style was um, accommodating style. The second person is Joseph and his brothers. And the style is accommodating style also. The fourth group is jo Jacob and Esau. Jacob and Esau. And the style is avoiding style. The, fifth, the fourth is Moses and Pharaoh. And the style, style is Jacob and Laban. And we have comprising style. That's the answer for the five major characters and their conflict handling style. Then the next topic we and we have ten here, so I'll just mention their names. So the first then Ken and Abel, then the third person and the third Simeon and Reuben against Shechem and his father. When Shechem defiled their sister, and then there was a conflict between the two um, parties. The fourth, David and Esau. The next is Okay, so the, the number two question is the characters and their conflict style. That's for number two. That's the question for number two. But number three says we should list out different cases that had conflicts in the Bible. So that's what I'm mentioning right now. I think I had, there's a question that asked what style. So I'm just mentioning the different cases in the Bible that had conflicts. Okay, so um, the fourth is David and Esau. The next person, Paul and Benambas. and Barnabas, six, Queen Esther and Haman, seven, King Ahab and Nabal, eight, Daniel and the President Princes of Babylon, nine, the Church in Corinthians, and ten, King David and his son Absalom. So those are the ten cases we listed that had conflicts in the Bible. So that's... Um, that's all our presentations for now. Um, yeah, yeah, welcome group three. Yeah, you know, we are, you're, really do, you're really doing well, but I would like to clarify one uh, statement. You said David and Esau, is it, uh, is it deliberate or an error? David and Esau. No, yes, David and Esau. Yes, it's not an error. Okay. It's not mentioned or discussed. Okay. okay. So can you Why throw explain? the light on that? Yeah, please explain okay. that. Yes. Um. Uh. You, you, you know that in the Bible, when um the Esau had an issue, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of God left him, and an evil spirit came upon him. So they had to bring David to the palace to pray instrument so that he, the spirit of God, will calm him down. David so and somewhere. David the king Saul. became king and King Saul. Oh, sorry, okay, not King Saul. Oh, okay. King Saul. Saul of okay, King Saul. I'm sorry, okay, not King Saul. King okay, Saul and David. Okay. okay. I would just like to add something. If nobody else has a comment, uh, when you were we were asked to describe conflict or give yes, suggest some words that 
uh, describe conflict when we hear the word conflict. Uh, mm -hmm. more, anyway, when I get to the, my own session, I will, I will, I will address that. I noticed that the only, the, the most of the words you suggested or you came up with uh, have negative connotation. But we'll come to that when during my session, which is just coming after this uh, discussion. So thank you very much, Group 3. Uh, you've done well. Do we have another group that is ready? I have a present? comment. Yes. OK, comment. OK, comment. OK. Yes. Please, if you are not talking, can you unmute yourself, please? If, if I'm not talking, I will unmute myself now. Thank you very much. We have a comment now. OK, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, group 3, thank you for a good job. Um, but so we expected more details. For instance, when you said conflicts and style, Abraham and Lot, I said they used accommodation. The two of them, you know what I expected to do is, what style did Abraham use? What style did Lot? In a conflict, both parties don't usually use the same style because of our personality differences. They may resolve the conflict at the end of the day, but if you analyze the characters very well, which one has avoidance, which one has accommodation, which one even did Ubuntu. Uh, when this book came out, personality types, people were able to situate some Bible characters in some personality types. I don't know whether you are aware of the personality types book by Tim Lahai and his wife. And he said something like, Abraham was phlegmatic, I think. He said Abraham was phlegmatic. Moses was, I mean, so that's what you are expected to do ultimately with the Bible characters. Now, also on the conflict, the conflict cases. Now the conflict cases, I mean, that was a brilliant, that was a brilliant uh, uh, thing. But uh, for people who are not, so to say, Bible scholars like you, maybe it would have been better if you just told us the conflict issue. For instance, when you are just explaining David and Esau, it was because Dr. K asked the question. You just say David and Esau, you just assume that all of us are pastors and Bible scholars. <laughs> so maybe... Uh, we say David and Esau, the conflict was over kinship, uh, whatever. David and Absalom, it was over this, 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 this. Uh, thank you very much. That's just my two comments. Thank you very much, Dr. K, for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Not thank sad. you very much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Do you have any other, any other observation? Any observation? Or comments? All right. Do we have another group? Yes, group, 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 ten. Group, group, ten. Uh, group 10. Group 10. Group 4, OK. OK, let's do group 4 before 10. Any other group? 4, 10. Which other group? 1. OK, one. 4, 10, 1 in that order. 4, right. 10, 1 in that order. And I'm supposed to actually present for group 2. And since I'm talking after this moment, I will merge my talking with my, because I will discuss conflict handling styles alone. So I'm thinking I'm going to talk extensively on that. So I'm going to merge my- Please, sir, please, sir. Please, sir. what is to hand group six to the presentation? So what? Group six. Okay, okay. Group four, ten, one, and six. Group four, group 10, group one, group six, in that order. In that order, so we All take right. group four now. Thank you very much for you have the floor. All right, thank you, sir. Um, I think the the our our mindset about conflict before the course started was the conflict is always on the negative. So the points we came up with in our groups, number one, we have um, disagreement, we had misunderstanding, number three, disputes, education, and number five, we have strife. Talking about five main characters in the Bible and common styles. Number one, we have the apostles and the murmuring Grecians. 
So under that, the apostles used the Ubuntu style. And for the second one, we have Isaac and the eight men in Kera. That's at the point where they were trying to they were trying to dig some well, and those the eight men were taking the well that Isaac's people were digging. So Isaac employed the avoiding style there. The number three, when Reuben slept with his father's concubine, that's Jacob. So Jacob got to know about it, but he used the avoiding style because he never mentioned anything about it until the point where he was supposed to, to determine the future of his children by blessing them. The number four, we have um, the case between Jacob and Laban. Now, Jacob, sorry, Laban had shortchanged Jacob's, Jacob's fees severally. And at that point, Jacob was using the accommodating style so later he used the collaborating and cooperating style. That was when Laban's children began to complain over their father's flock. Then when Jacob's family left Laban's house and Laban wanted to resort to forcing and competing style, I think in the process he had an encounter with God and God told him not to touch Jacob and his family. So he eventually set wood for Ubuntu when he met Jacob's family on the way. And the fifth character is um, Potiphar, Potiphar's wife and, and Joseph. So when Potiphar heard about what happened between, between his wife and Joseph, he never took time to, to, to use the accommodating or to, to find out whatever had gone wrong, but he, he employed the competing and the forcing style to undo the conflicting situation. So number Three, the third question lists cases of conflict in the Bible. We shortlisted five among all that our members that our members dropped. The, num the first one is the debate among Jesus' disciples on who should be their leader. Then the second is the conflict between King Saul and David. That's after King Saul found out that um, there's a prophecy upon David that he was going to be he was going to be the next king. And he was trying to do everything possible not to allow that to happen, but that his son, Jonathan, would take over. Then number three, we have Paul and Barnabas. When they were talking, when they had the issue of who will follow them and the, and the path they will follow in their ministerial assignments. Then number four, we have David's men and, and neighbor. That's when, in terms, and that, that has to do with the feeding in the wilderness when they were feeding their people and all of that. And the last one we shortlisted is the fight between the two allots during King Solomon's time over the child who was alive. That's all we came up with. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, detailed presentation. Do we have any comments or opinion or question for the group. Can we have number group 10? Good afternoon all. Hello, sir. Okay, group, group 10. Group 10. Uh, the, the uncle can I is con asking can I for continue? feedback on the presented uh, um, on the group just who, who just presented group uh, four, okay. so maybe we should get the comments before we take you, sir. Doctor K, I actually actually I actually called for comment. There was no response. Okay. So Hello. We, can move, we can move ahead with group 10 then. Okay. Group okay. 10, can you can we have your presentation? Thank you. Group 10, can I continue? Please go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. The first question that was that is talking about the five list five words that come to mind when you hear the word conflict. We have uh, number one, clash, violence, disagreement, 
trouble, malice, fight, misunderstanding, contest. These are the list we have. Then the second one, we went through the material that was given to us. As a group, we had discussion on it, where we saw the techniques, the conflict handling styles, we deliberated on those items there. Then in number three, identify five major characters in the Bible that de and determine their conflict handling style. We have Abraham and Lot. The style that Abraham applied was accommodating. We have Joseph and his brother. The style too was accommodating. Cain and Abel. This style was forcing, competing and forcing. Where Cain had to kill Abel. Then uh, Joseph and Absalom. We had uh, David, David and Absalom, David and Absalom. David applied accommodating style to, to this crisis, to these conflicts. Then the Solomon's harlot, the two harlots in the kingdom of Solomon. <laughs> Solomon applied uh, Compromising as well, compromising there. Then um, the conflict between Jacob and Laban, where Jacob was deceived by Laban. The, the conflict style Jacob applied here is uh, compromising, compromising. And um, the list of conflict uh, cases in the Bible, we have the conflict uh, between Pilate and Jesus Christ. And Pilate applied Compromising style there too as well. The case between Moses and Pharaoh, where the magicians of Pharaoh came and were doing all sorts. Moses applied the style of uh, compromising as well. I think this is what we have in um, group 10. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that brief presentation. But uh, I have this comment. The conflict between Moses and the Pharaoh's magicians, I think that what the Moses used then was there was competition. He, competed based on the power of God that is supreme and is uh, and also he won he won he won the he won the scenario he won the argument because his uh, his own magic in quotes was superseded the magician's uh, efforts so I think he used a competition I mean and he showed supremacy of the power of God. I don't know if anybody has any other comment or opinion or question for the group. I, I agree with you, sir, <clears throat> uh, that is more of competing than compromising. Um, what comment I will have for the group is that when they are doing their final submission, uh, just like the comment I gave to group uh, three, they should, the five Bible characters doesn't, I mean, they don't have to be in pairs. Instead of saying Abraham and Lot, you can say Abraham, Lot, and you say, you use this in the case of Lot. Uh, Absalom, you know, just five, not necessarily uh, as a couple, not necessarily as a couple. And also, when we are judging how 
some conflicts um, are resolved, like the case of Moses and the, you should look at the elements or the conditions for each type of style. For instance, for, co for competition, you know that is I win, you lose. That is the outcome. So we can use the outcome and uh, especially the outcome to judge what style was adopted in a particular conflict case. In cases, I, I like where somebody said, the, okay, I think it's group four now, when they said that the case of Isaac and the, is it the Philistines where I was digging well? What Isaac used was avoidance because he just left it, left the thing for them, set it under the, under the carpet. Um, I think we are accommodating, Sha. That's just the comment I have because we are still going to submit this uh, assignment as group and then our grading will be based on on how how insightful they are thank you very much please, please i want to ask you a question to group tessa i'm coming sir. let everybody put on their cameras we have been taking snap snapshots screenshots since the beginning and uh we don't want to be perpetually uh without without picture Go ahead, sir. Yeah, group they mentioned the, the group 10 presentation. Almost Alexander. Okay, sir. The group 10 presentation, they mentioned the Cain and Abel. And I was wondering, was there a conflict between Cain and Abel? Because mm, mm. uh, I was I was thinking about it, but I now recall that, recollect that it was God that intervened in what happened. But between Cain mm. and Abel, there wasn't really any conflict between them. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Abel wouldn't have followed him to the uh, field and all of that. I think it was mm -hmm. just, I, I think it's just a conflict within Cain himself mm -hmm. and how God intervened with Cain to see, to try to resolve the conflict within Cain. But Cain uh, despised the counsel of God mm -hmm. and uh, went on with uh, a fatal action. So mm -hmm. I do not think that there was I don't think that there was a conflict between Cain and Abel, but rather a conflict within Cain himself. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for that observation. Uh, if I may come in, there was conflict. And from what the what Prof told us before now, types of conflict, it started from intrapersonal conflict, conflict within Cain himself. And how conflict grow, grows is that if we do not manage it well at that intrapersonal level, it escalates into interpersonal level. We transfer aggression, we transfer frustration to the other party we relate with. So to that extent, intrapersonal conflict was transferred to interpersonal conflict. And that was why he became jealous, he became envious, and he eventually killed his brother. And that's the essence, that's how conflict grows. But well, there was no response it. or reaction from Abel. Okay, Abel was completely oblivious of everything. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't remove the fact that it's still conflict in the that was not managed too well. Like you said, God tried to intervene, but he refused. So that in personal conflict that was not managed well, I mean, was transferred to the brother and eventually killed. So most countries that are not managed well eventually become violent and there is killing, there is arson, there is hatred and all that. So it's, it's still conflict. And we just want to look at it. Doctor. Hello, sir. Yeah. I, I just, Dilly Olaju, for his name. I just want to say that even intra is more dangerous. <laughs> Very, very dangerous. The enemy you know is better than the one you don't even know. Um, so, I mean, with what we've learned today, conflict is beyond just two or three. It's also uh, intra. So I think we should just understand it that way, that it's not just inter, it's also intra. And it's very, very dangerous. 
That's just my comment. Thank you very much, sir, for that comment. You are very correct, sir. If uh, me, sir. But where does that the other party who does not even know that there is a conflict in the other man? Uh, I can I come in, Doctor Kejo, sir. Prof, you can come in. You can come in, okay, Prof. Thank you very much, sir. I I understand the point from which uh, Mr. Pastor Mosso is coming from because Cain and Abel. When they mentioned it to you, the first question I asked was, what was the conflict about? Um, but like I explained now, the conflict started intrapersonally. And as far as Cain, I mean, Abel is concerned, it was a latent conflict. <clears throat> latent in the sense that it didn't emerge. Cain wasn't, Abel wasn't conscious of it throughout he wasn't conscious and this is giving us uh, a new kind of dimension Cain wasn't aware of it but Abel was competing with him for God's favor so the subject of the competition in a sense is God's acceptance God accepted Abel's <laughs> offering. He didn't accept Cain's offering. But like Pastor Alexander said, Abel was totally oblivious to what was going on. He was totally unaware. He wouldn't have followed Cain. But Cain's interpersonal conflict eventually led him to harm a peaceful man who wasn't even aware of an ongoing conflict. Because he said conflict, the central thing in conflict is incompatibility. Maybe to Cain, being the firstborn, God was supposed to favor him and not Abel. So for God favoring Abel, it means God has disfavored him. So to be honest, to be honest, this is a new this is a new <laughs> dimension yes, of looking at conflict new, new, that new I knowledge. wasn't even aware of before. And My fascination with it is that this is mostly the kind of conflict that in churches. Hmm. Be treated better than someone that appears to be treated better. Hmm. Hello, sir. Hello. Oh, this my. May deny you of your promotion. Hmm. It may deny you of your promotion. You wouldn't know why you were not promoted. Hmm. It's a serious matter. In fact, yeah. hello, bro. Hello, yes, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, can I uh, add something to it? Yeah, the commands, sir. You have the your yeah. You are not giving us permission. Yes, we we we, we went to the we, when we talk about conflict, mm. the conflict actually starts with one person mm. who is displeased, who is disagree, who is disagreeing, who wants to compete, who wants to fight. And then the, the, this is just the dimension that the other person does not know. Mm -hmm. But again, if we are relating with somebody, there's an element of ah, this man is not written, is not answering me well, which is also part of conflict. Mm -hmm. You sense danger. And because it's my brother, he must have the, the both of them must have seen God's acceptance and rejection of their offering. They would have seen it. Abel would have seen that God rejected the offering of Cain. So he probably ignored or avoided the complaint as if he didn't see it or it doesn't matter or he felt he felt good that God accepted him and left his brother. So that's an element of avoidance or ignorance on his part. Like mm. somebody talked about deciphering, he would have deciphered, he would have sensed mm. some danger. Yes, even so. in offices, 
I learned that there's a story of a bank where two people were due for promotion. One oh. uh, is a Muslim, one is a Christian. Yeah, Just two of them. <laughs> and the, the Muslim person went spiritual and conjured the woman to travel out. She just got home, picked her car, picked her son, bought fuel, and were just driving from Lagos to Meduguri. She hmm. didn't know. She wasn't even aware that somebody was was, in, was jealous, was competing with, with her. It was true. <laughs> Thank God for the church that prayed three days. As they were going, they were going outside Nigeria, and the, the child saw, welcome to Nigeria Republic, and he yeah. shouted, Mommy, where are we going? And she came to her senses. Oh. And, so, and she, they talked to police, and she came back to Lagos, talked to the office, and the other man was sacked because it was sense that he used something else to set the woman on errand. So, <laughs> so it, yeah, he sent him on errand. He sent her on errand. And she didn't know. There was conflict between that man, competition, mm. disagreement, displeasure, displeasure mm. over appointment. Anything can cause conflict. There's another dimension, sir. There's another Anything dimension. Can cause conflict. Yes. Hmm. There's another dimension to this thing, and uh, we argued it in our group, or we discussed it extensively in our group. Um, somebody said, when you have issue with somebody in the church, that um, avoidance is one of the ways to, to, to manage the conflict. That instead of making issue out of it, just avoid the person for the sake of peace. We now told the person that um, that is negative peace. That um, you can't avoid somebody that have issues with you and you say you are pursuing peace. So I want to present it before the house to just be sure that we are okay. Because more than before, more than we, we know that if you have conflict, the right thing for you to do is just is just to just to express it and seek resolution. So hello sir. Avoid us. Hey, hello sir. Please please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes, so, this is a best of solution. We, 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 we don't see avoidance okay. as a, an, an active uh, means of resolving conflict. Anyway, my name is Adesho, and I'm presenting for group three. Please, can I go ahead and do my presentation? Well, I still please have uh, something to on, say. Sir. I, Let's I presented Let's talk for more comments. Okay. 10. I I okay. I stir up the issue of Cain and Abel. Yes, sir. Now I yeah. thank God for the way comments have have already come in. Doctor George has uh, made us to understand that actually conflict begins from a party. Conflict begins from a person that is displeased, that wants to fight, that wants to show that is with the situation. And the relationship between him and the other person. That is exactly why we have considered of Cain and Abel as a conflict. Yes, intra started with intra, then ended up in inter. So that's the way I see it. That is why we have uh, considered it as a conflict oh. between the two people. It, it, it gets more and more clearer. Mm. Yes. Mm. I guess, ma'am. But then, within the church setting, there is need to really determine which part, what pattern, or, or what method of uh, conflict uh, resolution will be appropriate or is appropriate. The issue of the of avoidance that was mentioned, it needs to be critically looked at how it can work in the church setting. Because earlier in the day, I asked, I posted a question on the chat. At where 
does God's perspective come into play in uh, resolving conflict among the people in the church? You know, so, but I've not seen an answer yet to it. But then this well, is sure it is clear. clear. It is clear. God's perspective is clear about conflict resolution. Then he who says, determines you know, it? You have, who determines it? And who determines it? The person it? that is offended. The person that is offended. The person, the intra-party, the person that, uh, that that has issues within himself. If you discover that you have issues, that's what we call offense in the church. We call it offense. So if you have a friend with somebody, that means a conflict has already started inside you towards that person or towards an issue. And according to Jesus, he said, if you have fault in case somebody, go to your brother and explain. No, so it is not common because ego, we are egoistic in the church today. But that is the standard um, prescription of Jesus. If you have fault against someone, go to that person. Tell him, if you cannot buy him, Get somebody else, go and meet him. Two of you should go and meet him. If he still refuses, get a bigger um, crowd. Go and still meet him. And if he dead, yet doesn't accept or he doesn't reason with you, he's not ready to resolve the conflict. Or he's not ready to talk about the incompatibility. Then he says, let him go. I think that is Jesus' prescription. And According even to the law of Moses, Moses at the, uh, when there are two witnesses, in truth is that of course that is that is not really that is crude anyway. But in my own position, that is Jesus' prescription is God's position in solving conflict. Um, thank you, sir. I'm not muted though. I'm not muted. Please, can I say something? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep, sorry, please. Um, in, in case of um, uh, we're talking about church and conflict now, how about in case of someone that you have not even done anything for? Well, I would um, I want to pin it down to someone who is envious because we deal with different kind of human beings in within church settings, someone who is envious of you. Or, or, or jealous of you, or jealous of another person. You, you, you don't really have offended that person. You've not done anything to that person. And um, in whatever, even categorically saying it that I just hate her, without really offending that person. Then how do you treat? How do you? And then um, trying as much as possible to greet, to please, to do everything with that. And the person that I, I just don't like, I just hate her. How do you do that? How do you resolve such a okay. Pra Praise no, God. No, I don't think. Please, sir, no, no, no. I would wish to, to no. speak no. something about where silence will work. Silence, as it reflects in the word of God. When there are many words, trouble is unavoidable. But he who restrains his lips. Hello. Hello, man. Hello, I think I've been muted, though. No, we can hear you. Madam, Pastor Dedouni, please continue, ma'am. Pastor Dedouni, please unmute. All right. So when you, if you despise your neighbor, it means that person lacks sense. But the other person who has understanding, you have to keep silent. Madam, are you getting me? When you restrain your word, it's not every time that you have to talk and that word must come because you are you, there is something that is happening probably you have reported once and the thing is not really happening as you desire you can keep quiet you can do more of prayers you can have more of callous me who, he who restrains his words has knowledge and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding is the word of god that made us realize 
turn with me to the book of Proverbs 17, verse 28. It said, even a fool, <laughs> when he keeps silent, is considered wise. Thank you very much. Do we understand? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Thank you very no, much. Can I can I respond? Uh, not yet, or sir. Pastor okay. Olashuko has been raising his hand. Let's give floor okay, to Pastor okay. Olashuko. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you all hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, very, very interesting. Um, I'm going to go this way. Um, we are expected to be peace-loving, peacemaker, peace-discharging, uh, peace-embracer people as children of God. Unfortunately, we have people who will not want to take that or cooperate with us. They are simply envious, and they can tell you to your face that they hate you. If a supposed child of God tells you that he hates you, it's a confirmation that that child has lost it. Because whoever hates his brother is a murderer. So he doesn't have the spirit of God at that point in time. We are talking scriptures. Now, we must also know that uh, everybody cannot be our friend. But we want to be friendly with everybody. Now, the place of the word of God and the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher to teach us how to go about every relationship. Having employed all the conflict resolution that is applicable in the Bible, and we are not getting results. Keep to prayers. Have peace within yourself. Be friendly and be sure that you are in tune with God. It saves your sanity. If not, you become insane. Don't die because of one person, because Jesus has died for all. But be friendly and have your peace. It's a multidimensional issue that we are talking about here. And the scripture and thank, the Holy thank Ghost. You, thank you very much. Sir. Yes. Thank you very, thank you very much. Well I think we have uh, tactically navigated from the uh, issue of uh, uh, Cain and Abel to avoidance as a handling style to avoid further conflict and of, to avoid the uh, violence. That is where the essence of the training is just to open our eyes to the possibilities of a uh, conflict in our community well, and how to. Begin to, uh, learn, to begin to learn how to handle conflict. We we can go on and on and on. We just be discussing, but the lessons are there that there are handling, that there are conflict handling styles, there are types of conflict, there are people involved in conflict, there are causes of conflict, and each cause determine, I mean, determines the handling style we are going to apply or adopt. So we just have to go ahead in this discussion to allow other groups to present so that we can quickly wrap up the day. So thank you very much for your comments and your observation. We, are all, we, all, we appreciate all your comments. Uh, thank now, you, is there sir. Another group, is there another group that I want to uh, I think present? group one is the next group, group to present. OK, group is one, group one or three. You, you, have, you have the floor, please. All right, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Ma, my name is Roti Miaojobi. I'll be presenting for group one. Yes, like uh, the earlier group have mentioned, five names or five uh, other ways to describe conflicts when we hear about it. From our groups, from our own group, we have word like contradictions, word like fights, disagreement, deficient, misunderstanding, control forces, crisis. Those are some of the words we identify in our group to also mean conflict or when we hear about conflict. Now, um, the five characters and the methods they use in resolving crisis or conflict as it may be, 
Now we have various one, but quickly let me mention the one we discuss. Some of the one we discuss. Mm. We have Paul and Barnabas. Where somebody mentioned that earlier too, Paul and Barnabas, when they were to go for a mission yeah. trip, they disagreed. Paul was of the opinion that they are not going to take Mark along. Barnabas was like taking him along, and um, Paul stood his ground. Barnabas also stood his ground. That was that is in Mark Acts of Apostles chapter fifteen, and they needed to compromise. They come to a, a, a position of. Take your own position. I take my position. So they went apart, and uh, Barnabas took Mark, and Paul went with another person. But at least the work continued. There was no the crisis was av was averted as they were able to take different position. Also, we look at Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot. In Abraham's case, and Lot, there are various. Uh, Styles that we identified. There were times that it look appears, it appears mm. that Lot was accommodating, was trying to accommodate uh, Lot's misgivings. There were times it appears Abraham was avoiding Lot, and there were times it appears they took a compromise time. That I think that was the final state that Paul had to come up, that Abraham had to come up and told Lot that Lot come. There is no need for us to fight. You take any direction you wish, I will use one style that was used to eventually uh, uh, crash into a hot. Also, we saw and discussed the issue between the Jews, the Christian Jews, and the in the book of Acts. You know, the Bible says that there were more money in that place. That is Acts chapter 6, and the apostles have to step in to avert the crisis. Now, in that place, we, in our group anyway, we, we added, we added uh, one more style. Uh, Abi, how do I put it now? Uh, what, we, what somebody suggested was that was a mediation style. Somebody have to mediate in the, in the crisis or in the looming crisis. But again, we also said that style could also be called collaborating. Because when we look at what the apostle did uh, in the light of that crisis, the apostles were like, OK, come, let's not fight. Appoint among yourself seven people that will be doing this, and we will be doing this. The apostles were like, we will face the ministry of the word of God and, the, and prayer why the other people you appointed will be serving the table. Now, that we saw that as a collaborating effort or a collaborating style to uh, avert crisis or solve conflicts. I've mentioned Paul and Barnabas. I've mentioned Abraham Lot. I've mentioned the Jews and the Christian, uh, sorry, the Jews and the Gentiles Christian, that is three. Number four is the issue of the woman that was brought to Jesus, that was caught in adultery. Now, that that assumes a crisis between that woman and uh, so-called uh, opposition. Now, when they brought the woman to Jesus and they were to stone the woman, we saw that Jesus used a style there. We call it avoiding style. Jesus, as we saw in the scripture, uh, in one place, he was writing on the floor, and uh, however, posed a question to them that let the first person among you that I have not seen be the first to cast the stone. He didn't talk about anything, he didn't uh, address the issue neither, but gradually, everybody disappeared, and the Christ is at base. That is number four. And the last one here, which is number five, is the issue of Aaron and Miriam as it affects Moses. Now, in that place, we saw Moses uh, adopt or use what we call avoiding style to ensure that crisis not, uh, did not really take place that time. So this is our home group 
uh, presentation for book one. Thank you. God bless. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Details and uh, well explained. Thank you. Best, thank you uh, very much, sir. You are welcome. Thank you. Yeah. The, we, do we have any comments or question or the want to add to it? Um, Dr. George? You, yeah. Hello, sir. Okay. Prof. Yes, sir. Now, uh, this is a comment that is to all other groups as well, especially <laughs> in the in the conclusion that um, avoidance was used. I, I realize that some of us are still taking the avoidance uh, with layman's understanding, as in you avoid it. Uh, in the case of the last presenter, when they said Jesus used avoidance uh, in the conflict between the woman. You see, the first point is that what we are expecting them to point out is the style that a party to the conflict used. If Jesus Christ was not described as a party to the conflict, Mm -hmm. Because they said the conflict was between the woman and her uh, uh, opposition. Yes. If the yes. party was this, uh, this, I mean, if the conflict was this, uh, described as between Jesus and the opposition, because there was a conflict between the two of them, they wanted the woman killed. They said, Jesus, what do you think? Jesus wanted the woman saved. And Avoidance, Jesus did not necessarily use avoidance in that instance. <laughs> because if you look at the description of avoidance in the material given to us, you avoid a conflict when the thing is of little value to you. And at the end of the day, it pains you. It pains you. You lose. The other party wins. Mm -hmm. You lose. The other party wins. I want each group that says avoidance was used to be to, to be careful to use the real description of avoidance to assess that situation. Mm -hmm. The person that they claim used avoidance, did he lose in the situation? Mm -hmm. Did the other no. party gain at the expense of the party that used avoidance? Mm -hmm. And this goes to other, other claims as well. When we say somebody used accommodation, <laughs> Did he accept other parties' uh, view and jeopardize his own? You know, all these parameters should be used to clearly delineate. Mm. Yes. Uh, just a general comment. Thank you. Hello, bro. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to address that during my presentation. Oh, but please. let me let me just say it now. Okay, sir. If it be, if it's between that woman and the accusers, mm. the accuser's style was competition, mm -hmm. which we can also call confrontation, mm -hmm. and it was to win her mm -hmm. at all costs. Mm -hmm. And she was more of as a guilty person, not ign not ignoring. It's a compromise. Mm allowing them to have their way because she was caught, she was mm -hmm. guilty by law. Mm. By law, she was guilty by law. So if you want to bring Jesus in, if you not became a conflict between Jesus and the accusers, mm. Jesus also used, he competed, he confronted them based mm -hmm. on superior law of love Agreement. and forgiveness. Mm. Law and forgiveness, love and forgiveness. And that's why they all went Again, in defeat, just like the one also submitted mm -hmm. in defeat. Mm -hmm. They also went away in defeat. Mm -hmm. with superiority of the law of law and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we need to do a thorough analysis of our presentation. We want to do the final submission. Mm -hmm. We need to go scratch below I mean, the surface mm -hmm. and do a thorough analysis. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. 
Do, do we have any other comments that we can bring group one in or group six in and we can take our other things? Groups, if there's no, if there's no other comment, can we have group six if they're still around? Yeah, we are still around, sir. <laughs> so please, group six, you have the floor, please. Group six. And let's Hello, am I being heard? Group six. We are waiting for you, group six. Yes. I'm talking. Am I being heard? No. Nobody's hearing me. We can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. My name is um, Adik Boyadis Toko. I'm presenting for group six. I, well, um, I greet everyone. Let me just go straight, not waste time. Um, in our group, we, we, we listed five words that came to mind when conflict <laughs> is hard. And the five words are one quarrel, argument, fight, disagreement, and abuse. Am I being heard? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Then also we look at the conflict handling styles critically. We try to break them into the characters of each of the styles. For instance, avoid is you don't win, I don't win. And then the token, the animal presenting it as a token is tortoise. And then accommodating is I, I lose, you win. Teddy bear, I win, you lose. Competition of force, which is being represented by shark. Then I win some, you win some. Nobody win all. That's compromise, which is represented by fox. I win, you win. It's cooperation or collaborating, which is being represented by a goal. Then Uhuru or Umbutu, which is engagement of divinity to solve community conflicts. Now, we, we look at interpreting it into biblical characters and scenarios. The first one we'll look at is Peter, the conflict between Peter, or the conflict between Ananias and Sapphira, and then Peter. There was a conflict between the couple first, which they transferred to Peter. And Peter used the, he engaged divinity because they want to alter the system of the spiritual atmosphere of the church at that time with their, with their idiosyncrasies, with their lack of being truthful. And uh, Peter had to engage the Holy Spirit, which is force of divinity, to instill order in that uh, spiritual atmosphere. And of course, we all know the story. So, Ananias and Sapphira, they, 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 they engage avoidance. And Peter engaged the force of Umbutu. Then we look at avoidance. We look at uh, Jacob and Reuben. Jacob knew that his first son has defied his bed, but he kept quiet. He avoided it. He didn't want conflict. So he was engaging avoidance as a means of resolving the conflict until his bed time, the bed, the, the, the bed, bed, when he had to invoke um, and show Reuben, and he invoke, of course, spiritual um, invocation, which is the judgment upon Reuben. That is Ubuntu and avoidance. <laughs> That is what we are. We can identify there. Then number three, we look at Peter and Elimas the sorcerer. The sorcerer had a conflict, trying to stop Peter from preaching the gospel, from communicating the gospel. But Peter had to engage force competition. He had to engage force to silence him and stop that conflict. 
So we use force, which is competition, and also we engage spiritual force also, which is Ubuntu. Then we look at Paul and Peter. The issue between Paul and Peter, when it has to do with the, the Gentiles at circumcision, of course, Peter was revealed to accommodate the Gentiles at first, but he had conflict within himself. He was avoiding the conflict. He was avoiding the situation. And when Paul took it up, and Peter was still avoiding the situation, was still avoiding the Gentiles, he didn't want to eat with them because they are not circumcised. Peter and uh, Paul had to be very harsh and be competitive and use force to rebuke Peter, even though Peter was by far a senior in the apostleship rank. But Paul had to rebuke him harshly and use force, superior argument, to break him. And of course, when they go to, we, we look at James and the rest of the apostles are the council. James have to use an um, accommodating style. He, he had to accommodate the argument of Paul into the council. He had to accommodate the argument of Paul into the council, and eventually they accommodate the uncircumcised into the body of the beloved. And finally, we'll look at um, Tama and our father-in-law in Genesis 38. Um, Tama, uh, uh, the father-in-law was avoiding Tama. Of course, he, she knew he slept with her, but though he did not know that um, it was the daughter-in-law. But eventually, Tama had to resolve the conflict by superior, by arguing, by competition and force. He used superior argument, he competed with him, and he, he, he exposed the, him, the father-in-law, and the conflict was resolved. So that, those are our deliberations. That's the summary of our deliberation from group six. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much, sir, for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah, just like uh, I have something to say, just like uh, Prof observed, that the the way we apply avoidance, avoidance to yes, issues, we have to be a bit, yes, we have to be a bit careful. It's not all about, uh, to, I hope you are not bringing our own personality into this, into this discussion. Uh, avoidance is not, uh, wouldn't be everything that is being applied in the Bible from the instances we gave. But if you look at it critically again, maybe after our discussion this afternoon about this uh, confident handling styles, we may probably have another, on, a better understanding of these handling styles that we can now go back to our assignments and uh, redo it or rewrite it so that we can be on the, on the same page. Uh, however, I don't know if anybody has asked any other uh, comments or question so that we can uh, move on to the next thing. Prof. None, sir. None, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for the presenters. Thank you very much for the group. We give, we give. Hello, sir. Kudos to you. Can we give us a round of applause? Uh, hello, sir. All right, madam. Yes. Yeah, so I, I just want to comment on this avoidance issue. Okay, madam. Uh, li literally, um, immaturity comes with avoidance. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> oftentimes, it's with the children that it manifests. <clears throat> And uh, if there's any, any opportunity getting into trouble or having to do something that they don't want to do, they exhibit avoidance behavior. And if we are not careful, just like you said, it's a disorder on its own. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree with you, man. Thank you very much. I agree with you. As well as the disorder, of course, it may be good sometimes to apply it. We'll come to that or we come to a class of our uh, handling style. Thank you very much for your comments. Can we give all of us a round of a, a prop for the presentation? A round of applause. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You. So, Prof, can we go into the next uh, module now? Yes, sir. Let me let me share it. Okay. Please, when you're not talking, please, can you unmute? If you're not talking, please, can you unmute? Can, can you mute if you're not talking, please? Because the background noise is uh, causing a barrier to uh, to the network. Thank you. Yeah, the next module is a uh, conflict handling styles, which we have been discussing in our various assignments. And also now let's go into the, the specifics and the detailed discussion of a uh, conflict handling styles. Can everybody hear me, please? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Now, I can hear you. Oh, let me yes, add sir, something to what has been said and to all, uh, an opinion that's almost been formed from our. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me add something to our understanding of conflict. Yes, when we hear conflict, it suggests to us that it's a negative thing, it's bad, and all that. Uh, well, that's one angle to the concept of conflict. Conflict, of course, they come with this negative thing that we talk about. It's a reaction, it's a response to that conflict that occurred. The displeasure, the argument, the contention, the fight, they are all responses to the issue that caused the conflict. So conflict in itself, uh, is also a positive thing in, a, in the way we relate. One, because it gives us room to understand the other person we are relating with. Two, it gives us understanding that this person does not or will not like this. So I don't have to do it again. At that point, the conflict does not escalate. It does not bring displeasure. It does not bring fighting because when we realize that what we have said or done is likely to displease somebody or has displeased, our response to that displeasure, which is the first response, we respond again is, oh, I'm sorry, I never knew it would hurt you. I'm sorry, I never meant to hurt you. And it stops, the conflict stops there. So it's an opportunity to relate better with the person we are relating with, to understand him, what he likes, what he does not like, what he, our preferences, which we have not been discussing before we started to relate with each other. So conflict is also an opportunity to improve our relationship, to understand each other, and to make society better. It is the way we respond to it that causes the displeasure, the fighting, the argument, and all that. Okay, that's one. Uh, if you look at the story of Abraham and Lot, Abraham perceived that I think this is my small boy is greedy. Why should I compete with him over what is not what God has given me? Let him have the one he wants to take. So um, that is why I said conflict starts with the person. Abraham can choose to be displeased with Lot's choice, can choose to be angry with Lot's choice. 
but because he has a balanced emotion, is a matured person. He, he reacted to that issue of choice in a positive way. You can take what you want. And God promised him, let him have his way. Whatever you choose, I will bless the place for you. So that would have been a conflict within Abraham, like in the case of Cain and Abel. It would have been an intrapersonal conflict, but he responded to it in a positive way. Not now, not this is not avoidance now, he's responding. He said, take what you want, have your way. You are too small to me to fight you. So if we do that to ourselves, most of the time we have conflict, the conflict will not escalate beyond that level of occurrence, that latent level. And that's why we can transfer intrapersonal conflict to interpersonal. And from there, it can become intergroup and international like that, okay? So I just say, I should make that clarification before we, uh, now, am I, am I okay? Am I communicating? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Very well. now, yes, sir. When we, yeah, Prof has said he will assist me to display the slides for all, for all, for all, for all of us to see. So when we talk about conflict handling styles, first, it means that that is the way that you and I handle conflicts when it occurs. It is the way we react to conflicts. We respond to conflict when it occurs. Cain responded negatively with hatred, but Abraham responded with love. Take what you want. We have five types based on our natural mix. The, without no particular order, the first one I want to talk about is avoidance. Avoidance is when we, okay, there are five types anyway, that's avoiding, that's accommodating, that's compromising, that is competition, and that's collaboration. These are the five major types that we, we all we apply or adopt to respond or to handle conflicts when, they, when we face a, an issue with somebody. Now, the, the styles you have were mentioned in slide one, now I'm in slide two, they vary in degrees of our nature to assert or to cooperate. When we want to assert our opinion, our agenda, we want to ensure that it is done, then it affects the way we handle conflict or we want to cooperate. It also affects the way we handle conflict. For instance, somebody who is assertive, assertiveness can be positive, it can be negative. You are assertive if you make your points known without insulting or abusing the other person. That is positive assertiveness. But negative assertiveness is when and when you, are, when you are positive, you also wait for the other person's opinion. But when you are assertive in a negative way, you just want to air your opinion. And you don't want to consider the other person's opinion because you feel you are just right. And so, and that's not good for conflict. It's based on the, the way we are. And the way we cooperate too, we want to make sure that the other person is not offended. You are all happy together. Okay, that's fine. So that's about, uh, about that. It's breaking up. Yeah. 
The thing is breaking. I don't know if the internet from that side is on our Hello, sir. I can't hear you. Uh, let's, let's hold on for a minute. I think his network issue on his end. It's a normalized song. I don't know if me to post that. Hello, sir. We can't hear. Uh, okay, George. Uh, uh, let me see whether it's even with us again. Uh, the network in his in his place is, I think, is poor now. Can you hear me now, bro? Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Hello, bro. Hello, Welcome back, sir. Hello, bro. Welcome back. Sir. Welcome we can back, hear you now, sir. Go ahead. Come back. Sir, come back. We can hear you now. Hello, sir. Dr. K. George. Uh, okay, while we are waiting for him, he has asked me to help him share uh, something on personality types. But uh, I've only been able to share it on our WhatsApp. I just did now. So when he comes back and is making reference to it, we may need to open our WhatsApp to, to be able to relate to the documents. Hello, everyone. Hello, sir. OK. It's okay. OK, okay I've sent that to the WhatsApp. I think. Dr. George, we've lost him. Um, while we wait for him, let me just continue. Um, one of the things we need to know is that no conflict handling style is better than the other. All of them are best suited for certain situations. For instance, you may decide to choose avoidance in certain situations where, I mean, that would just be the best one. For instance, look at a situation whereby you, you board maybe Okada. I mean, you, you ride Okada and then you are going for job interview and the Okada man has under Naira change or balance to give you. And you are now fighting over 100 Naira and you have job interview or or a, a, a contract you want to go and defend. It is most uh, sensible for you to avoid any kind of any kind of stuff, any kind of conflict. You such an Okada man or Cuba driver or whatever over hundred naira or five hundred naira. Yes, the money is yours. Yes. Uh, the man is cheating you by not giving it to you. But at, at, at that point, you yourself, you will know that I better not double into this conflict. Let it just go. Or you are dragging issue with a bus conductor when you are well-dressed and the bus conductor is, is a ruffian. I want to be dragging issue over 50 Naira. The boy is abusing you. You don't want to abuse him back because you just know I mean. So I said that to say that no conflict handling style is best in all situations. You don't want to do collaboration with in such scenarios I've painted. And you now want to talk with Okada man and then talk with the bus conductor so that the two want to show him that you want respect uh, for even if you are going to let the money go, you should learn to talk to you. Sometimes you don't need all those. You just 
He just brushed the thing under the carpet. And why do you do that? Because the relationship between you and the other guy is not important to you. You may never see him again. Hello, can we hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We can hear you, so, sir. There are certain parameters we use to judge which style is best suited for this situation. But if you are in a relationship, I mean, you are in a conflict with somebody whose relationship you value, your coworker, your spouse, your children, over an issue that is important, over an issue that is valuable to you, you may not want to avoid. So for you to judge which one is most appropriate for each situation or which style somebody is using, you want to see what is the value of the issue or goal to him or to you? What is the value of the relationship to you? And what is the outcome? What is the outcome? Also, you want to see the level of cooperativeness that you require and the level of assertiveness. There are certain things you don't need to assert yourself over. You don't agree with it, yes, but it just, this doesn't mean anything to me at this point. Oh, the value I attach to this thing is minimal. I can overlook it. And this relationship at this point, there are certain times you are in a conflict with someone that the relationship is highly valuable to you, but the issue at stake is not that valuable. Maybe with your wife, solid relationship, but now the issue is over chicken leg. You now start to want, I mean, you want to be dragging issue over chicken leg. And I say, no, it's not about the chicken leg. It's about people should learn how to, I mean, it will not be that valuable to you at that point. At another time, it may be chicken leg, but it may have to do with something more than that. It may have to do with recognition, then you don't want to avoid. You want to sit down and let's address this issue. So there are situations where you use avoidance. This is where I guess. Again, on accommodation, in this, in this case, like Abraham did, many of us alluded to that, in just Abraham accommodated Lot. Yes, Abraham decided not to assert himself, to say, I'm your uncle. You should learn to respect your elders. Even if I ask you to choose first, you should tell me, uncle, please choose first. Abraham deliberately suspended his level of assertiveness. I don't want to assert myself over this issue. Why? Because, probably because, God had told him he will inherit all the Canaan land. So he knew that whatever lot, whatever possession lot is taking is temporary. That ultimately, God has given him the whole heart. It doesn't mean that Abraham was a weakling. So sometimes you accommodate people not because you are a weakling, but when you look at the ultimate goal, just mm, let this thing go, Jerry. The level of cooperativeness is high. Abraham wanted good relationship with Lot. But the value that Abraham placed on the green field that uh, Lot chose, it was very low because Abraham knew that this is a small part of his own inheritance. God has said, I will be through me, the whole heart will be blessed. Abraham really valued the relationship with Lot, high value. Now, outcome, lose win, yes, temporarily, Abraham lost that green, maybe the best part. But ultimately, we see that Abraham took the decision based on a bigger understanding. In fact, we see that more of what Abraham did looks more like Ubuntu, accommodating but tends more towards Ubuntu. Because Abraham didn't feel like he lost anything. Okay, on compromising, one is willing to sacrifice part of your goals 
and persuade the other party to do the same. Here you negotiate. You say, okay, this thing is important to me. I know this is important to you too. If I let this go, I will want to add this. You gain some, you lose some. And compromise is usually done with people. I mean, they are best done with people that are logical, people that are pragmatic. We have to be able to tell the other party that if you wound me this way, I'm also ready to wound you this way. But if you let go of this, which is not so important to you, but is important to me, I will also let go of this, which is not so important to me, but is important to you. When we train hello, on hello, bro. hello, are you back, sir? Okay. What I don't know what I, I was just I was just speaking on. I don't know what happened. No, it's your network, sir. <laughs> ah. So what point? What, where did I get off? Via via off. Um. I think we started having poor, poor audio when you were talking about, I should help you post uh, the personality types. personality types. Wow, that's a long time ago. Yes. So I'm wow. taking, accommodating, uh, oh. avoidance, and I'm now on compromise. The, the central message I've given is that each, there is no better, there is no best um style each style is best suited for particular situations so yes. i'm currently on compromising sir Over okay to you, sir. do you want me to recap the personality types that have faced conflict please we didn't hear anything okay. about it oh wow so i'll be i'll be talking to myself sorry sir <laughs> okay i said as natural it's human beings is okay i said that as natural human beings we all belong to either of the following four categories of personality types that are discussed in a psychology environment. Well, one, we have the choleric, we have the sign joint, we have the phlegmatic, and we have the melancholy. Now, the choleric, in no particular order of preference, or Energetic, is impatient, he wants to add, is a goal getter, is argumentative, ambitious, efficient, and passionate goals. They don't have no vocabulary. Everything is possible. They say here, no, it's not it's, it's possible, it's not possible. Everything is possible. And so there are people like that that are naturally like that by birth, from by default, they're like that. And so it affects the way psychosis individual who is exaggerate who likes to exaggerate is a socialite is charismatic and is quite optimistic. He likes the outdoor, he wants to go out, he wants to have fun, he's a fun lover. And so this is a type of some people. And so when conflict occurs, it affects the way they handle conflict. The next one is the phlegmatic, who is a shy, stubborn, lazy individual, is relaxed, is not in a hurry, is but is very kind and is quite observant. He can observe things. We can call that maybe he, he can decipher easily. He observes very well every detail. Now that's the phlegmatic. Now, the melancholy is the obsessive individual who is also a perfectionist. He likes details. He doesn't want to make mistakes. So he can go over and over it again. He wants to cross the T's and dot the I's to make sure there's no error in that job. Then it can be very moody, very thoughtful, organized, and creative. So these are the four types of personality that we all belong to. So, and it drives us the way we handle conflict when we, when it occurs. Now, these are dominant in each of us. Each of these is dominant in every one of us. But all of us still have some bits of the others. So, and that's why we can switch from this handling style to that handling style depending on the situation and circumstance because we, we belong to the four.
but one is dominant. Okay. So, uh, am I still on the floor? Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. another mm -hmm. one that affects the way we handle conflict is the type of uh, the, how we relate to people. I want to call that one relationship types in conflict. But again, there are four types. Based on our types of personality, there are some people, number one, is that I am good, you are not good. Some people believe that they are good and the other person, other people are not good. You know, we know people like that around us. You say, I am good, you are the devil. I am a saint, I am this, you are that. So we put other people down always. Now the next category is, I am not good, but you are good. There are people who are like that, who are, you know, they, they say I'm not good, Us, our drivers, our uh, 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 domestic staff, they put the things in that position, I'm not good, but you are good. Then I am not good, you are not good. That's the third category. I am not good, you are not good. Both of us are bad. Those are the area boys. I will, I will tell you something like, mass of people will tell me you will eat yellow. I mean, those, those are that type of people. They believe that the, the, both, uh, both of them are mad, are crazy. But the last and the best of all is I am good, you are good. There's something in me that is good. There's something in me, you, that is good. So I can learn from you, you can learn from me. So these are the types of personality and relationship that we bring into conflict when they occur. So that's why we can choose to compromise. We can choose to fight, you can choose to accommodate because this is, these are basic in us. So it drives us to choose the style we want to use to avoid, to handle conflict in addition to understanding the person we are dealing with. What styles will he use to handle conflict or what style has he used to handle conflict in the past so we can give it back to him or her. At least if that's acceptable, the Bible says we should understand, we should deal with some people with knowledge. So if you have knowledge of the person we are dealing with, then you can apply the appropriate handling style that the fellow will apply, will like to be applied to him. And so that will be, uh, that will be a, a very good outcome. Now, coming back to, now, I was saying that when we avoid, am I still communicating in Yes, sir. Now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me, let me, let me add it. Maybe you can add this to uh, Yeah, let me add this to it. When we, I was going to say there are this, uh, between just two or three, I would suggest when we avoid we, activity, our behavior, we keep malice. We keep malice, we walk away from the scene, from the relationship, we walk away with divorce, we separate, or we block the individual on the telephone or social media. Now, can the class mention two or three other activities we can do or that has been done to us with and So that statement is not that. it's not clear. Hello. I didn't get it. Hello. Okay. I said when we avoid, there are activities or behavior we put up to, ad to adapt or adopt that avoidance. For instance, we keep malice. For instance, we block the person on our phone or on our social media. I mean, these are practical avoidance activities. So I am asking that the meeting participants will suggest two or three other avoidance activities that we do when we adopt uh, avoidance. Hello. Relocation? Hello. Yeah, what some people does, by the time they stop communicating with that fellow, they go out there to communicate with others. It's more yes. like backbiting. Yes. 
you can't face this person, but you go out there and uh, discuss this issue with others because you think you are avoiding the person. Actually, blocking the person on social media is not the best way for a Christian. You could afford to avoid with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Telling him to help you, we are all human. Help me to forget and forgo. As I forgo, let me forget and behave as if it never occurred. Yes. And uh, allow justification for the person involved. And truly, sometimes when you do that, you just realize that <clears throat> when, you, when you let go and you become empty inside of you, you the one that is trying to avoid the issue. You are not avoiding the person, but you avoid the issue again. Do you know that the other party whom you are trying to, to correct or to, to avoid, to avoid the issue, may come to realization of what the person has done wrong because of okay. your type of avoidance and you refuse to let go in, in allowing the person to come, maybe by using your own lifestyle to showcase what is right, the person could see. Okay. Praise God. All right, thank you. Another situation, another situation of avoidance can be that, am I on the floor, sir? Another situation yes, of avoidance can be when the other party is, is very heady, will not want to understand you. He won't want to, he won't want your viewpoint to be understood. In that, in that situation, one can avoid. It can take place in a, for instance, in a meeting, a meeting where all opinions will be heard, will be heard. And this is a person that whenever he says a thing, he will want the house to take his opinion. There could be a person within the house that will want to avoid such a, such a one. So in a situation where one will not want to accept the view of others, such a one can be avoided. Thank Not you. Okay. It's, okay. It's, it's okay. Thank you very much. Let's okay. move ahead. Three people yes, are bro. raising up their hands. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we want to take them. Madam Adi Oshun, hey. Pastor Adi okay. and uh, Pastor Awo Jobi. Now we if have. Can uh, be, if, they can, if they can be brief, otherwise we'll just take two and move on. If they can be brief. Okay. Okay. Um. Good afternoon, everyone. Can I go ahead? Please go ahead. Okay. Okay, sir. Um. One of the reasons why I joined. Uh, I think there is an interference somewhere. One of the reasons why I joined the conflict resolution uh, training is what I want to talk about. So I will please plead that uh, I've been listening to because I need. Uh, uh, intervention of uh, people's opinion and thoughts about my experience. Okay, I handle the finances of the cooperative and the financial secretary. And people see me as being uh, the one that dish our policies, that they are not friendly with the members, which whereas is not the situation, is a collective decision of the finance team. That is one point. Okay, recently um, on the mobilization team, the concept of mobilization, the head, we had an issue where I have to point out to her that this is the order of things to be done. And she told me she was sorry. But I told her, I had to explain further that it is not an issue of sorry. It is an issue of this is the way things should be done. You are supposed to get confirmation from the finance team before you admit anybody into the group on the WhatsApp page. And she said, I should take knife and cut off her neck or I should come and beat her. And I was wondering, why are you saying this? Where is this going to? I'm just trying to point out an order to you. So why are you saying this? And she said she had told me she was sorry that uh, it's not quite. I said, no, it's not about that issue. I just want you to understand 
what has gone wrong and why you should take correction so that it will not repeat itself. That's one scenario. She uh, spoke for that. I didn't respond. In fact, the president had to call me not to respond. In fact, I didn't even listen to the voice note when I was told not to respond. Because for me, I felt if I had listened at that point, I might want to still correct for that. So I just avoided that page entirely. I'm still there, but I don't make any comments or respond. Another scenario, this is with the treasurer. Uh, she was supposed to pay somebody and she did not pay according to the schedule. So I have to ask her, you said you skipped this. Why did you skip it? She said she thought the person was supposed to be paid yearly. I said, no, please, next time, pay attention to the schedule. It will not always go the way it has always been. And she said, okay, well noted. And that ended. Just my own point of view is trying to point out the reason why things did not go right and avoid it the next time. But sometimes they see me as see, um, uh, uh, a perfectionist and all that. Because the first scenario, she said, hey, uh, go and do the work. Don't, don't see me. I don't even know. I don't just, but that's just the point. So for me now, I'm asking, what should I have done rightly or in a better way? because I've avoided and I'm still avoiding on the first scenario. And the second scenario, I tried to explain further and the person understood and said no such. I hope my question is clear. Thank you. Very clear question. Hello. Uh, please, Hello. before we take another, I want us to realize that we are closing this session today by 4.30. And we oh. are not yet in the middle, I mean, up to half of the presentation. Yes. So I want yes. us to bear this in mind. Uh, so please, uh, over to Prof. you, sir. That's okay. Uh, if you want to take more. Prof, do you want, to, do you want us to respond to these uh, cases on floor or we should make it another time so that we can finish the work for today? Okay. It depends on you, sir. Let, let, let me go to one or two other people who want to say something. Of avoidance. I, I want us to explore the. Okay, yes. I think for in that scenario, avoiding for a while is okay, but not forever. What I will do or I will suggest is you can, you know, the Bible talks about you approaching the other person if there's a wrong. You can approach the person. So can the person mute, please? Uh, uh, a background is disturbing us. Now you can approach the person at a later time. That, for instance, I noticed that when I spoke to you that day, you didn't like it. How did I offend you in that discussion? How do I discuss? How do I present to you in the future? You can you can adopt you can you can do that. And you can uh, you can ask somebody who she he or she respects to ask him or her what happened. I will give you an instance. A guy was working with me in the past. He just left the house with for no reason. I don't know how what. So I couldn't even reach him. So I had to call his friends that I know about two or three or four people. It was from them I got to know that he was displeased with, with the way we were handling our business then. So I called her. I called him. He said, no, you shouldn't have done that. You should have come to me now. I'm not difficult to talk to. He said, he was afraid to tell me that I could just react anyway. I said, no, I won't react anyway. It's good that you have told your friend. Thank God you told them. And so we solved it. So it's still, it's still about still uh, approaching them, like the Bible says, call the other person and discuss with them. If it doesn't work, invite an elder. Invite a third party. If it doesn't work, it still invites some other group. So it's an effort to make peace work because the Bible says we should pursue peace with all men. As long as we relate together, either in the church, at home, we need to communicate and relate and be peaceful in our, in our relationship. I hope I'm a, I hope I'm a, I've tried a bit to yes, sir. answer your question. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Thank you very much. Yeah, sir. I, I appreciate that. Sorry, sir. But what if I do not want to talk about it? Am I a bad person? <laughs> you can't you can't stop talking about talking about it for except you are resigning or he's resigning but you can still meet again in life so you just have to open the don't ever close the door with anybody 
Now, I have a friend who they fought with the boss. For three years, they were not talking. But thank God they didn't, they didn't remove each other's number from their phones. The day it was three years, the boss called him. But when, where are you? See in my office. He gave me a contract that in a year, he built three houses. Wow. <laughs> so don't, I will advise, don't close the door permanently with anybody. Keep it open halfway or quarter way. I, in Yoruba, they say, I don't know if there's anybody who can interpret that for me. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, so God, please don't close, don't, yeah. don't close your door permanently with anybody. Just leave it. Except the person is extremely, extremely violent, extremely bad. Then you can save your life and fly. Thank you, sir. All right. I think we should go back to our discussion now. Yes, sir. We are on compromise. Now, when we compromise, yes, I just have to uh, have to quickly paraphrase. Uh, when we compromise, we what we do is to find a middle ground to resolve the conflict. We also minimally accept options that are available to everybody. And on the relationship, which is a good then you try to reach a consensus. Uh, that participant should mute, please. And so we all try to reach a consensus that is acceptable to all. That's compromise. What's in it for you? What's in it for me? And uh, we moderately pursue important goals because there are two equally strong parties that are committed to mutually exclusive goals. Mutually exclusive goals. goals. Mutual talks about two people, they have similar mutually exclusive goals that are exclusive to them. They are pursuing goals that are not uh, together. And so that is why they now, in the name of relationship, it's okay, Let's meet, let's, let's meet, let us meet midway. That's compromise. But again, in compromise, somebody gives more than the other person. Maybe the person who feels I am not good, you are good. We easily compromise. In business, when you negotiate, our women are very good negotiators, our, our, our women. Some people are not good negotiators. They quickly compromise prices. Those one type, they buy and they get cheated. So when we compromise, when we adopt compromise, we get somehow cheated and we feel a bit, uh, well, we want to cooperate. That's the goal. Keep that goal. So somebody easily compromises either the seller or the buyer and agrees to a price that may not be favorably uh, profitable, but there's a little profit, so he's not losing everything. That's the fine, that's the thin line. It's profitable to the, to both of them, but somebody is not as profitable as the other person. Okay. So that's about uh, compromise. But competing, competition or collaboration, I mean, confrontation or forcing or fighting is without any concern for the other person. We need to at the goal at the expense of the other person. We have no idea of consideration for the other person. We want to win at all costs. Winner takes all. Loser loses all. That's the name of the game in competing, in, in confronting. And we can see the image of a shark ready to swallow. So the competitor, the fighter, the confronter takes all. He forces using his personality as the choleric, for instance, aggressive, energetic, winner, argumentative, ambitious to win all. Okay, you win, you 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 gain power, you win, you use your power, your position, your expertise, your rank, your age, your ability to talk. I'm an orator, I can talk to pressure the opponent into submitting 
to your demands. Okay? So it involves aggression, autocracy, confrontation, and intimidation. These are the things we do when we compete. And so we are high assertiveness, in assertiveness, we are very low in cooperativeness. We value our own issue above other issue, other person's issue. Our value for relationship is very low, and the outcome is win, lose. I win, you lose. You lose, I win. That's not, uh, that will not go well for relationship. But the other one is collaboration, collaborating or competing. Now, this one is the two parties come together, focus on the issue, not on the other person, which the other personality types we do. Not on the person, to jointly solve the problem. We also call it joint problem solving. And so we don't give us our self-esteem, we see we are still assertive, we still want our goals to, uh, to be achieved, but again, we have for the other person's goals or interests or needs. And so when we collaborate, we say something like, this is what I want, what do you want? What's in this for you? Why do you want this? This is what I want. So we sit down to, first of all, communicate our issue, trace the history, trace where we are at fault, the two of us, and begin to look at options that we can adopt to solve the issue. So we're ready to negotiate, we're ready to give some, and we're ready to lose some. So win some, lose some. And so it gives us a win outcome, a 50-50 outcome. Everybody is happy, nobody is happier, nobody is sad. Because I want something. I got something that are valuable to me. And I also allowed him or her to win something that is valuable to him. So it's 50-50. And so in this context, our assertiveness is high. We are ready to cooperate. We are, we are very high in terms of cooperation. Our value of own issue or goal is also high. Value of relationship is also high to the two parties. And so we, we achieve a win-win a 50-50 solution. I win, you win. That's about that. Then the Ubuntu, uh, well, maybe I should allow Prof to handle this so that can, uh, the baby, before I leave it to Prof, I want us to, when we are to meet our, uh, well, I want us to look at the, each personality types and consider them You will handle conflict M, for instance, a choleric and a sanguine, between a sanguine and a phlegmatic, between a phlegmatic and a let you have time, maybe some other time. You can do it in your in your individual group discussion. How will a choleric handle conflict with a, with a sanguine? How will with a, with a melancholy see how we can begin to see ourselves in this scenario? Thank you very much. Prof, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir for that wonderful uh, presentation. Thank we you, have, sir. Uh, very few minutes to wrap up. Uh, like you have said, the emphasis of presentation on conflict handling style is that we all have default style that we use to respond to conflict. But when we uh, imagine, or when we want to become conflict managers, we have to be aware of other conflict handling styles and also be aware of our own. We should be aware of what style the parties that are uh, that come to us, the styles they are using, so that if there is need, you will need to you rent them. But ultimately, helping other people manage their conflict, we want to uh, use those five parameters assertiveness, value of relationship to you, want to factor this thing in from the party's perspective for us to know which one is best, which style is best used uh, on this situation, in this conflict situation. I don't forget, no, no handling style is best in all situations, none. 
Okay, let's look at this sixth one, which uh, is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a shortened form of Ubuntu, Ubuntu, Gambatu, which means a person is a person through other people. Which is shortened to mean, I mean, to be I am because we have. You see, this approach is basically rooted in African uh, worldview, uh, African spirituality. I will find that also in some biblical views as well. Like I was saying the other time that Abraham probably even used Ubuntu in the sense that to, to him, to him, uh, being at peace is not is of primary importance. It's much more important to him than uh, gaining a few plots of land or a few acres of land for his animals. Because Ubuntu means collective personhood and it encompasses compassion, goodness, uh, and so on. There are people who let go of their claims in conflict, not because they are accommodating, not because they are low in assertiveness or they are void. They are conscious of the conflict, but they just let go because of higher order, uh, higher order claims. Okay, there's a case of two Muslims fighting over a juicy property in Abuja, I mean property worth hundreds of millions, and they are going to drag themselves to court. Their lawyers were already, I mean, prepared to go to court at the highest possible time. Then they said this elderly Muslim now had about it. It's not related to any one of them. Maybe just new one in the person. They said they now called this one. I don't know whether the two, two fighters are Muslims, but at least one of them was a Muslim. He now called him and he said, <clears throat> are you a true Muslim? The person that told me in, in a training is a first-hand witness. He said this elderly man wasn't a rich man. He's just any, I mean, these two that just sit around mosque. Are you a true Muslim? The guy said, yes. Are you sure you call uh, upon Allah? He said, yes. Are you sure that when you die, you are not going to bury this house with you? The guy said, yes. And the guy now said, if you are sure, that you are a true Muslim, and I, you are not going to bury this house with you. I want you to hands off this case. And he said, the guy said to him, Baba, from this moment, I'm handing off this case. He didn't have any animosity. He didn't feel as if he had lost anything. But because of higher order claim, he was able to let go. There are people that when you appeal to their higher self, when you appeal to the common good, even especially we uh, religious leaders, church leaders, you know how to do that. We now bring everything within the context of eternity. By the time you bring everything in the context of eternity, the importance people are placing on house, on cars, on this and that, just fizzes out. This is a similar thing to the idea of Ubuntu. Um, so in Ubuntu, our assertiveness, I, collective goodism, I, cooperativeness, I, the value we place over that thing, I, the value over relationship. Now this relationship extends beyond the relationship between one and the other party, but also include relationship with the other living and non-living things. Because Africans believe that uh, there's a connection between the living and the dead and the living inanimate and inanimate object, animate and inanimate object. And it's our responsibility as individuals to keep this equilibrium, to keep this balance. So sometimes because of that, to maintain equilibrium in the cosmo, cosmopology or co co cosmoses, I'm letting go of this thing. Now, conflict management strategies said the first thing, the first step in strategically managing your conflict is to know your default or preferred style. Based on your understanding of the styles above, determine which one you most frequently use. How does it work for you? And what are the consequences? 
a good takeaway from this training will be for you to be able to identify your natural, your default conflict handling style. So that when that default, let's say somebody's default is avoidance. Now, by the time now you want to use that default in a relationship that is valuable to you, you know that that is not the appropriate one. You have to consciously switch to another one. Some people, they find it easy to talk about their differences. Some people, it is not natural for them. But if you are the category that is not natural for, but you are talking about, you are talking about conflict over something that is valuable to you with someone whose relationship is important to you, you don't want to avoid. You don't want to avoid. And there are some people, their, their natural thing is to compete. Now that you know that there are certain things, there are certain conflicts you should not compete for because the value of that thing to you is not I, but the value of the relationship with that person is I. So just say, okay, because I value the relationship with this person more than what you are having conflict over, I will let it go. Although that is not your natural uh, that is not your default style. Your default style is to fight tooth and nail for everything because you're a competitor. But now that you've undergone, you're undergoing this training, you know that you should consciously, you have the ability to consciously switch between one strategy, between one style and the other. The previous conflict handling styles we have discussed, they translate into five conflict management strategies based on five principles. Issues, relationship, relative power, available time, and desired outcome. In other words, these are the parameters you now be using to judge which style or which strategy is best for your conflict and you'll be able to enlighten parties that bring their conflict to you. Issues. To what extent does the conflict involve important priorities, principles, or values? Identify them. Are the issues important? Now, as a conflict manager, if they bring a conflict to me, I want to sit with each of the parties to see how important or what value they place on the issues. Because many times in conflict, parties are so confused, parties are no longer listening to themselves, are no longer reasonable that the conflicts usually will appear unsolvable. But like the case of the twins, Taiwo and Kende over issue of orange. The other time that I illustrated, the conflict manager can sit with each party and help them identify their priorities, what is important to them. Sometimes when there's a conflict over money, the value of the money is important to somebody but the other party, what is important to him may be, just, may be just respect, recognition that I'm your senior. And once the other party recognizes that, he may not be interested in sharing the money with him. It is our duties as conflict managers to help party identify their issues and the value of the issues to them. Number two, relationship. The importance of maintaining a close, mutually supportive relationship with the other party. How important is this relationship to you. We should not assume that the value we place on similar relationship is what parties place on it. For instance, you may place a value on OGA subordinate, superior subordinate um, relationship at workplace. And you are talking to this guy that has issue with his boss and saying, yeah, you know, they can, they can sack you. If they sack you now, where will you be getting money? But the other party is already looking for a way to go out or he has already established his business. So that August subordinate relationship is not important to him at all. It is our duty as conflict managers to be able to help. What value do you place on this, your relationship? Spousal relationship, a business partner relationship, work colleague relationship. Relative power. Power is an important issue in conflict management. We want to know the power balance between the parties. Who has more power? Who has less power? How can the underdog acquire more power? 
Sometimes when we think of power, we only think because it was power. They had power. But as conflict managers, we should be sensitive to soft power. For instance, let me use the example of the employer and employee. The employer may be, the, may be seen as ultimate power. However, the expertise of the employee may be such that if he pulls out, out of that organization, the organization may crash. Or the employee may be able to, to sell his expertise elsewhere, such that the issue of power within that relationship may not be as important as we may see it. Again, I repeat, it is your duty as conflict manager to be able to tease this in house. What, what is the position of power? What is the power balance here? And you have to go beyond, I mean, below the conspicuous power. Available time. How much time do we have to resolve this issue? Time should also be factored in into the choice of our conflict management strategies. And finally, desired outcome. Desired outcome. When you are resolving a conflict between two people, somebody, one person cares about the relationship, another person does not care about the relationship. The, the, the thing cannot work. So if you have listened to the parties and you find out that one, uh, one party places more value on a relationship than the other, I mean, cares more about it, about win-win or win-lose, you better target your conflict management strategies like that. You see, the Bible says, as much as we uh, as lies within us, we should be at peace with all men. But there is a clause said, as much as, in other words, try your best. But once you have tried your best, and the other person is not forthcoming, let it just be. You see, not every man is a, uh, let me say, there are some children of Belial, sons of Belial, that they don't want peace at all. But we need to try our best for that is an interpersonal relationship. But in mediating or intervening in other people's conflicts, when we listen to parties, in rare occasions, we find parties who are like sons of Belial. Who are like sons of Belial. They don't want reconciliation after we have tried our best and so on and so forth. They only want trouble, trouble. They are still saying, no, we must go to court. We must go to court. We must, you can't force uh, dispute resolution or conflict resolution on people. But in most cases, we will find large percentage of people who want some sort of peaceful resolution. And it is with this kind of people that uh, you can be successful. So uh, we leave us to read up on this other one. We've talked extensively about them. Um, in other words, you have conflict management strategies when you understand your defaults, when you understand other available options. But the best is, I mean, ultimately, when you now know which style is best suited for which situation, that is when you have become a good conflict manager. Your case will be like the case of the householder that Jesus Christ spoke about. He said a householder, a good householder, uh, ah, how did he put it? He said he knows um, from the treasury of his house. He brings out uh, items, both old and new. Please, can somebody help me on that? Hello? Is it the Hello? Bible text? Yes. The, why, why uh, Jesus, uh, said, the kingdom of God is like a householder that has um, items in his house, both old and new. I, I will look for it. I'll search for it and then give us tomorrow. Um, but I can use this one also, this Bible passage that says, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, who knows that part? 
show yourself. Prof. Second Timothy two fifteen. Okay. First Timothy two fifteen. Uh, Stop showing yourself approved. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. You see, when you have learned the conflict handling styles very well, and you have mastered them, you will be like that man that will show himself mm -hmm. that will show yourself <laughs> approved. You will know. You will rightly you will divide. Know, you will rightly divide. You will rightly design which strategy, which approach is best in each situation. First, for yourself in your own conflict, but also for others. School are very important. So thank you and very much. So we want to, I think we have come to the end of today's uh, session. It has been very, very intensive. We've eaten like five minutes into our, um, our time today. We're sorry about that. Um, we're supposed to have questions and answer for about 30 minutes. But unfortunately, uh, we couldn't. Maybe any comments we have, we can post it on our WhatsApp or we wait till tomorrow morning when we want to start. We can start with uh, such questions. Some people's hands were up the other time when Madame shared her experience, but we couldn't take them. Maybe we can do that tomorrow morning, first thing tomorrow morning, if you don't mind. Uh, so on this note, I want to say a very big thanks to you once again. And uh, we look forward to seeing us tomorrow. We can continue our discussion on WhatsApp, on our group WhatsApp, to refine our, our group work. Our group work. Um, thank you very much. Over to Dr. Ifia Jekwe. Um... Thank you very much, Prof. I want to say a big thank you to the speakers for today, Dr. Kyle George. And I've had a very engaging time and um, feedback. Uh, maybe just me just to comment a little more feedback to this um, training from participants. Just to from a man and a woman, please. How has it been? Just in one minute. I I think uh, it's it's really it's really intensive and it's really thought provoking. So I'm very, very insightful too. So we want to appreciate you for um, sharing this deep knowledge with us. And we pray that God will give you more. And uh, he that diligently seek to your query favor. So as you're seeking our betterment, the favor of God will not elude you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Amen. Any woman? Yeah. Does anyone want to speak? Does anyone want to give us feedback? Hallelujah. On, on behalf of all of us, I say a big thank you to the organizers and uh, for how you have taken the issue to the level that we have understanding. And my prayer is that as we continue on the training, we will be able to grab what is needful of us to move to the next level in soul winning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, ma'am. So please, Amen. let's try to be more so that we can cover as much as possible. As you can see, we are carrying over question and answer time. This morning by nine, only 12 people were in. We'll appreciate that we all log in a few minutes to nine so that nine o'clock will start and you won't miss anything. Thank you. Good night. See you tomorrow. Shalom. Good God bless you all. God bless you. Wow. Bye. Wow. God bless you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hi, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Bye-bye. We love you. Bye. 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 The internet was showing us out. Love you, sir. We don't want to go again.
<laughs> this is anxiety. Thank you so much. We did enjoy this session. We're, we're overwhelmed by that knowledge. We don't want to leave. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't add water now. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Let's see how it goes. Let's it's good. <laughs> uh, it's good. It's good for the faith. It's good. It's, it's spiritual and also brain fasting. Okay. Bye. Bye.